let me give you a true story that happened that leads into my other uh, passion. Okay. Um, I was playing in Frederick, Maryland. Okay. All right, one night with a country western band. Okay. And I was the only black guy in the band. Mm -hmm. And consequently, the only black guy in the club where we were playing. And I came off now that this club was predominantly an all white club. And when I say all white, I don't mean that blacks could not go in there. Right. It was only a few years back. Right. Um, but I mean that blacks did not go in there by their own choice. Right. Because it was usually a good choice. <laughs> they were not welcome. All right. Here I was in this place, right. only one. And I came off the bandstand um, after, after the first set, home break, and I'm walking across the dance floor to sit at the table with my bandmates. There's a white gentleman gets up and walks across the dance floor and puts his arm around my shoulder. I stop and turn up to see who's touching me. And uh, he says, you know, I really like your all's music. I said, thank you, I appreciate that, shook his hand. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, I've seen this band before. But I've never seen you before. Where'd you come from? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I just joined the band a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. He says, man, I really like your piano playing. You know, this is the first time I ever heard a black man play piano like Jerry Lee Lewis. <laughs> now, for perhaps some of, you, some of, the, of your younger viewers who may not know who Jerry Lee Lewis is, okay. Jerry Lee Lewis is a great white rock and roll, boogie woogie, rockabilly piano player. Okay. If you don't know the name Jerry Lee Lewis, everybody knows the songs. Uh, Goodness gracious, great balls okay, of fire. Okay, now there we go. I uh -huh. got a connection. Whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> so you remember those songs about that rocking piano? Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. okay. That's Jerry Lee Lewis. Okay. All right, he's still around today. He's a good friend of mine. Okay. And, uh, oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And so something, I, I don't recall what song I was playing, but right. something I did in the style reminded this guy of Jerry Lee Lewis. Okay. And um, he says to me, you know, this is the first time I've ever heard a black man play piano like Jerry Lee Lewis. Okay. But I was kind of taken aback, like, you know, where's this guy coming from? Right. And I said to the guy, I said, well, where do you think Jerry Lee learned how to play? <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? I said, well, Jerry Lee Lewis learned how to play that style from the same place I learned, from black, blues, and boogie-woogie piano players. Right. That's where rock and roll came from. Oh, no, 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 Jerry Lee invented that. I said, no, he didn't. Well, we argued back and forth. And I told the guy, look, I've known Jerry Lee Lewis since I was 13 years old. Wow. He told me himself where he learned how to play. Wow. But well, the guy didn't buy it. He didn't oh. buy that I knew Jerry Lee. He didn't buy that I, that I you know, that Jerry Lee learned how to play for black people. Right. And, um, but he wanted to buy me a drink. Now, I don't drink. Okay. But I agreed to go back to his table and have a cranberry juice. Okay. I go back there, and he was sitting with a buddy of his. So he sits next to his buddy, and I sat across from them. I meet this guy. I sit down. The waitress brings my drink. The guy takes his glass. And he cheers my glass, and then he says, you know, this is the first time I ever sat down and had a drink with a black man. Well, now I'm really taking a back. Like, where is this guy coming from, you know? Um, and you said this was only a few years ago? Yeah, just, you know, what, uh, it was 19, 1983. Okay. Okay, we're 2011 now. Okay. 1983. I was 25 years old at the time. Okay. And in my 25 years on the face of this earth, I have sat down literally with thousands of white people or anybody else right. outside of my race and had a beverage, a meal, a conversation. Right. This guy was probably in his mid to late 40s. Okay. <laughs> he never sat down with a black guy before. This is Frederick. I know there are black people in Frederick. <laughs> I've seen them. So I know they exist, <laughs> right? So how is it that he missed them? Right. And I just did not find Yes. And I said, why? He looked down at the tabletop and didn't say anything. Hmm. I said, why? His buddy said, tell him, tell him, tell him. I said, tell him. He looked back at me just as plain as day, and he said, I'm a member of the Ku Klux Klan. Wow. Well, where else would a Klansman and a black man come together and, and be friends mm -hmm. and sit down and have a drink? Mm -hmm. well, you know, ordinarily, had I walked in that bar and I wasn't playing music, I might have gotten my buck kicked. Might have been a bad day. Might have been a bad day, a bad hair day, a bad whatever day, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I, I began interviewing Klan leaders all over the country. Wow. Many, many of them, not all of them, many of them ended up becoming good friends of mine and quitting the clan and That's giving so me cool. their robes and hoods. So today I have robes and hoods okay. given to me by active clan members wow. who quit the clan because of the friendship we had forged. All That's right? really cool. And, and they no longer believe in that ideology. Right. And, uh, and they believe in unifying races. This is a former who hated me. I was your enemy. Right. All right? So as a result of, of this, um, one day, I want to open a museum. 
No, I still play full time. I've always played full time. I love music. Right. And, and, what it, and the power behind it. Sure. But one day I want to open a museum and share some of these things that I've learned and offer people an opportunity to come to their museum. There'll be an interactive museum where they can share their stories okay. of how perhaps they hated somebody or how perhaps they felt hated. Right. Anybody and everybody will be welcome. And I will display objects um, relative, relative to race relations, whether it's white supremacy, black supremacy, anti-Semitism, whatever. Wow. So those are my goals. And it all started with the power of music. That's very neat. That's very cool. Thank well, you. congratulations. That's a great effort to make. And I love that it all, I love, I love the, you know, the power of music that you're bringing to my attention. I mean, you know, you, I think that a lot of people who love music kind of know that it's kind of like a universal language and everybody loves it, but I've never heard anybody tell a story about how it can really change people's lives like that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it is one of the most phenomenal, underused tools. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you give um, you know a piece of advice or a, an encouraging um, word or a nugget, so to speak, to all the other people who are out there who are you know maybe building a business or trying to uh, live a dream that uh, they can kind of use today? Absolutely. I think one of the most important things that I've learned when dealing with various people from all over the world mm -hmm. and even right here in my own country, somebody who would be my sworn enemy, like a member of the Ku Klux Klan is that while you are actively learning about someone else, at the same time, you are passively teaching them about yourself. So you always want to be honest and upfront, because while you're evaluating them, they're evaluating you about how you are reacting to them. And that will bring you closer together, because everybody can, you know, can see through a lie, and they all appreciate honesty. The question for the day is, yes. this is what I've done to try to improve um, my society in which I live, you know, for, for myself and my fellow human beings, and hopefully for generations to come. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, what will you do? And, I, as I told Tara here, I majored in music. I didn't major in sociology or psychology. So if myself, a simple rock and roll piano player, can affect changes like this and bring people together, like a black man and a clans person, any of us can do something like that just by learning how to effectively communicate with, with somebody else. And if I can do that, and that's what I've done to better my society, my question to you is, what will you do? The future is in your hands. What will you do with it? Wow. Thank you very much. That was thank amazing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us today here at Clyde's with Daryl Davis. And um, together, our hope is that we can go out there and help one more person achieve and live their dream. Thank you for coming.